Today what we're going to talk about are memory obstacle courses and this is something that I learned when Bubs was in occupational therapy. They did memory obstacle courses a lot because they worked on two things that occupation therapy works on. First of all, it's the gross motor. Second of all, it's the memory, working those things two things together. Think of a memory obstacle course as an obstacle course with a really fun twist. It can be done with one child. It can be done with several children. The gross motor skills are so important for kids in their ability to run, to skip, to hop, but also in their ability to be able to hold a pencil and have good penmanship. So first of all, we're going to talk about how to set it up, and then I'm going to give you some examples. First one is how to set it up. You want to begin and end in the same spot, and I'm going to explain why that's important in a few minutes, but begin and end in the same spot. That can be that you run the obstacle course in a straight line and then they come back, or that you run it in a circle. The sky is the limit in what you put in your memory obstacle course. Literally, the sky is the limit. And then secondly, or I guess this would be third, you've got to set boundaries. Because kids are going to see what they can get away with when they do a memory obstacle course. And that's where I was very um, happy that I was able to see many, many memory obstacle course in occupational therapy and see these boundaries that they set for the kids. When they told the kids to hop like a bunny over the pool noodles, they wanted them to hop like a bunny. That means that they couldn't hop with one foot or they couldn't walk around them. If they told them to do a specific activity that was for a reason, they expect the child to do that. And when they didn't do it correctly, which most of the time they just forgot, then they would just have them do it again so that they could remember for next time. Okay, so once you get your obstacle course set up, then you're gonna add the memory twist. This could be flashcards, this could be magnetic letters, this could be puzzle pieces, this could be Legos, anything that you are working on with the child. That activity, the memory portion, is going to be placed either in the middle or at the end of the obstacle course. And then have a collection area for whatever they are going to have to remember. And again, I'll explain this in just a few minutes. Explain to the child what the memory twist is and have the child repeat whatever that's going to be. And don't remind them. This is very important. You want them to remember what they need to do. And then last is increase more items as the child does better and better in the memory obstacle courses. So move from one puzzle piece to the child bringing you two puzzle pieces. Add music in the background, add a timer. All of these will increase the difficulty. Okay, so now I have you totally confused, but I wanna explain what I'm talking about. First of all, let's take this first obstacle course that I have set up and I've drawn a picture of it to help you understand what the child is doing. Okay, first of all, right here, I have placed an empty puzzle. This would be like the peg puzzles that have the wooden base. So I've placed an empty peg puzzle. I placed a pool noodle, just like this one, where we've cut it in half, okay? A pool noodle. I placed three bean bags a mini trampoline, and then here are the puzzle pieces. So I'm gonna explain it to the child like this. For this obstacle course, you are gonna jump over the pool noodle. Then you will crawl over the bean bags. Work very hard not to fall down and don't dive into them. Then jump on the mini trampoline five times. And then I would ask the child, how many times? And the child would say, five. Here are the puzzle pieces that you will bring back to the start. You will need to remember which one to bring back. I will not help you, so make sure you pay attention. Then you can place the puzzle pieces back into the puzzle and sit crisscross applesauce until I give you the next item to remember. Do you have any questions? The first time the child does this, it can be a little confusing, but after you've done a couple, they will realize very quickly what they need to do. So then we would start and I would tell the child, I want you to bring back 
the circle puzzle piece. Ask them, what are you going to bring back? And the child would say, circle. Then the child would jump over the pool noodle, crawl through the bean bags without falling down, jump on the trampoline five times, and pick up the circle. Then this child would go back, jump five times, crawl through the bean bags, jump over the pool noodle, and put the circle in the puzzle, um, and then sit crisscross applesauce. And I would say, good memory. Great job. Then we would start with the next one. I would say, go pick up the diamond. What would you pick up? The child would say diamond and go through the memory obstacle course. Okay, let me give you another one. This one is for an older child. And for their memory, I would give them some flashcards such as these. And I would have the child pick up both the uppercase and lowercase. So let's look through this one. Here we have the flashcards, pool noodles. The child's going to dribble the basket, or I'm sorry, dribble the soccer ball around the bucket and then tightrope on this string that we have here. So I would explain it to the child like this. For this obstacle course, you are going to hop over the pool noodles like a bunny, so feet will be together. Then carefully dribble the soccer ball around the bucket, tightrope on the orange line, placing your feet together. You will step four times, so your heel will touch the toes, then your heel will touch your toes, and etc. How many times? And I would ask the child, four. And then you will see the flashcards you will need to bring back to the start. You will need to remember which one to bring back. I will not help you, so really pay attention. Then you can place the flashcards in the bucket and sit crisscross applesauce. And I would have a bucket here. So in this case, the child is going all the way around and then picking up the flashcards and placing them together. Do you have any questions? Then the child would tell me if they have any questions about the situation. So to begin, I would say, I want you to bring back the letter that says, what letter are you going to bring back? And the child would say the letter that says S. After the child performs the course correctly, I would say, what letter did you pick up? And they would tell me S. And I would say, great memory, great job. And then we, we, we would continue. Now, I've just shown you two examples. You could do so much more. And on the ABC Jesus Loves Me website, I have a plethora of ideas to use in an inside memory obstacle course as well as in an outside obstacle course. You can find these at abcjesuslovesme.com backslash ideas backslash memory dash obstacle dash course. You can also do a search for memory obstacle course and find out the same information. I'm telling you, your kids are going to love this. And I think a lot of people skip it just because they don't know what it is. And it sounds confusing maybe, but this is an activity that I really, really encourage you to do. What age would this be appropriate to start with? And we start the memory obstacle course in the two-year curriculum. So I think two-year-olds can definitely do this. Obviously, the older the child, the more you want in the obstacle course. And then obviously, the more memory you would add. Can this be modified for an almost two-year-old? I definitely think it can. It can also be a great activity because you're teaching obedience. They have to follow exactly what you are telling them to do, and then also you're teaching them to bring items back to you. Would you set up the same course for different age children or use a different one? And I think you can very much do the same course. What I would do would be have different areas for their memory. 
So let's say one of the children would have flashcards here while the other child maybe had Lego blocks that they were supposed to bring you a specific color. So split up what they're supposed to give you. Or another idea would be for like a four-year-old, they're learning the names of the letters and the sounds and have them bring one back to you, but a five-year-old have them bring back the uppercase and lowercase and you don't give them as much information about it. So you can do the exact same. You could also change it so for younger children, the goals or the um for younger children, you wouldn't have as high ex expectations because they don't have the gross motor ability. So a younger child couldn't gallop where an older child could. So those type of things you could change. So with the Legos, um, I was saying you could do the different colors of Legos. You could have a stacking where in the middle of the obstacle course, you tell the child, I want you to stack four blocks. And this is great for the one-to-one -one ratio where the child is having to go one, two, three, four, and then have them bring it back to you. And that would be part of the learning. You could tell them, I want you to bring back a block that has eight I guess I'd call them holes on them, I'm not sure, um, eight um, knobs on the top, and they would have to count which ones had the eight. So again, the sky is the limit. You can do so much with this. Outside, it's super fun. You can take this to the park and include swinging. You can include um, going down the slipper slide all of these things are inc increasing the child's gross motor. And then by adding the memory into it, you're increasing their ability to do activities, but still focus on that point.